Texas A&M is out of the Gator Bowl. Now, I talked about this on the Wednesday show that they had shut down for just a little bit, and I talked about how I figured it would probably affect the college football playoff in some way and that we may see these bowl games just become uh, destroyed throughout this bowl season. So far, this is the only one that has actually lost a team. Of course, Wake Forest trying to figure out who they are going to play. The NCAA competition committee, I believe, is having a meeting today uh, or on, on Thursday to try and figure out exactly what's going to go on. Everybody was reporting late Wednesday that it would be Rutgers that was going to be the next team up. And then reports started coming out that said, no, Rutgers is not going to be able to do it. It looks like it's going to be Illinois. And I know that Brett Bielema had come out on Twitter and was like, hey, we're all in. We can get everybody back. We'll be ready to go. I'm curious your thoughts on this. It's it's kind of strange to call a football team back right at Christmas in order to prep for a, a bowl game that uh, you really would have never expected. But the fact that we might have a 5-7 and seven team playing in the Gator Bowl just kind of shows this is all this is all a show, it's all ESPN, it's all for TV. Uh, give me your thoughts on this. Well, it's all for money. And the yeah. reason Illinois is going to be the option for this, Pete Thamel has the perfect, and I mean perfect quote for this, I'm going to butcher the quote, but in essence, Whenever you're trying to figure out a solution for a bowl problem in college football, look no further than corruption. And there is a very, very wealthy multi-billionaire owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Shaq Khan, who is a University of Illinois alumni who's going to make sure they are the recipient of this bowl bid. Go to the deepest pocket and you get whatever you want. That's all college sports are. I've used this analogy before. I know a lot of people don't like it because it's very crude, but it is apt. It is correct. It is absolutely the right thing. All these people are whores. They just, they'll do anything for your money. Anything. Nothing is off the table. There's nothing so gross. There's nothing so disgusting that they will say no to. I, I don't think you're wrong there. I don't think you're wrong at all. Give me your thoughts about A&M sitting out. There, of course, a lot of people talking about uh, A&M didn't want to ruin their recruiting hype by going out and losing to Wake Forest, etc. I really don't think that was it at all. Uh, Ross Bjork came out and said that, I mean, there are 20-some-odd kids that have symptoms that are now in isolation, and you don't, I mean, you can't play them. Like, the game is a week away. Like, what What are you going to do? So, if they actually have symptoms... Uh, so, I, I would... I'm going to lean towards the people thinking this is A&M probably didn't want to play this game. And, and the reason I say that is look, I need to know more about these kids in isolation. Like, I, I know we're never going to know that because they're college kids and we don't have privy to that information. But but I'm I'm working under the assumption it'd be amazing that Texas A&M has the only place in the world where 18 to 20-year-olds are actually getting sick from this. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's – but but right now, you know, it's we, we, we've got weird-ass weather going on around the country. This is cold and flu season. Like, does somebody got some sniffles? Yeah. We don't want to play this damn game. And I don't know that it's just for recruiting purposes. Their, their whole coaching staff is in flux right now. And it's chaotic. And to try to go play a bowl game right now would be a huge pain in the ass considering it's not a big bowl game. And they, they don't have anything to win from it. They don't have anything to gain from it. It's an exhibition. They damn sure don't need the bowl money. So why why try to do it? Let's start testing everybody because you know the rule, right? The rule is, is if your players are vaccinated, excuse me, you don't have to test. They're testing people because they know this Omicron uh, variant is going around, sweeping the country. And I bet if we test all these kids, we can get a bunch of positive tests. Well, nobody else is testing anybody. Why? Because they want to play in their bowl game. And they don't have to because the rules say they don't have to. Yeah. Now, I, I guess the ones to watch out for to see <laughs> which bowl games might be canceled, uh, we'd have to look at Texas Tech, I think, in the Liberty Bowl against Mississippi State. I mean, they are going through a whole complete upheaval of their staff. they got a bunch of guys uh, transferring, opting yeah, out. Yeah, but all Texas stuff. State probably needs the money. That's the, There's a big difference between Texas Tech and Texas A&M. True. Uh, and, because and you these might be, bowl contracts, hang on now, these bowl contracts, they cover this really good. I'm basically just regurgitating everything that happened on the Yahoo podcast <laughs> in this segment because those guys are who I turn to for the information for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Those contracts are still void. Like, they're still good, okay? 
Texas A&M, if this bowl game is not played and somebody else doesn't take their place, Texas A&M is responsible for 100% of all of the hotel rooms that they booked up because all the bowl game system is is just a money sham. That's all it is. Texas A&M is responsible for every player, every coach, every band member, every staff, every bit of their ticket that they were supposed to sell. Texas a and still responsible. They got deep enough pockets where they don't give a damn about that dollar number. But in a place like Texas Tech, A, they lose the bowl money, and they're responsible for all the bowl income. They, I know that Texas, and they still got a lot of money. Listen, they don't have A&M money. They don't have F-me money. They got F-you money. They don't have F-me money. That's a, that's a good point. All right, I was going to bring up SMU as a possibility, but that's also uh, another one of those yeah. that uh, they may not be able to do that in the uh, Just because the you're movie. going through flux doesn't mean you're walking away from that. That's true. That is true. As you said, there are some – some teams like Illinois that is trying to play a bowl game, even if it's you know the Gator Bowl against Wake Forest, you know it seems like not that big a deal, but it is a huge deal to some of these kids. So we shall see. I guess you know it is is LSU maybe in that position for the Texas Bowl? You think? Uh, oh, I don't think so. I, I don't know that they've got the problems with the COVID going on, and I haven't heard any rumors that they're trying to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I I will tell you this. I don't anticipate this being the last one. Um, I also don't think LSU's got back. Like, they got big in their boosters, but they're already paying a lot of money for other things. A, A&M has more money than everybody not named Alabama and Ohio State and Notre Dame, and I don't know that those schools have more money than A&M. Those schools are just all in the same pool of we're richer than all the rest of you sons of bitches. By a lot, by the way, so it doesn't matter. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.